Hi, my name is Michael Cullen for Film Sound Tutorials, and welcome back to another video in my video series of a one-man workflow for post-film sound. And in this video, we're going to talk about exporting your final mix, creating stem tracks, then printing audio to those stem tracks, and then finally exporting your final audio deliverables. So in the previous videos, we ensured that our final mix reached the correct volume levels. Now we have to make sure that we deliver our final mix with the correct deliverables. So for those that don't know, the easy way to export out of Pro Tools is by using the bounce to disk function. And let me show you how to do that really quickly. So if you go up to the top of your session, I found the easiest way to bounce to disk is that you first select your video, so Pro Tools knows how long to make your final WAV file, and then you go to File, Bounce To, and then Bounce to Disk. And from here, you can select your bounce source, which is normally our stereo output. You would want to use WAV files. File format, you can use interleaved or multiple mono. Bit depth is always 24 bits, 48 kilohertz, which is the standard for film production. And for the file name, if the spec doesn't specify what I should name my final deliverable, then I'll either call it the print master track or the final mix track, or normally when I'm bouncing the disc, it's normally a rough draft version of the mix. And so I'll just call it whichever sound pass this is. So if this is the first time I'm sending it to the stakeholders, then I'll just call it sound pass one and maybe put a date if needed. And then for the directory to export it in, you can either use the new bounce files folder that comes with the new version of Pro Tools, or if you remember back all the way to our previous video, then I normally use the deliverables folder where you'll put your mix there. And very nice in the new version of the Pro Tools, you can also offline bounce it so you don't actually have to listen to it in real time like you used to in the old versions of Pro Tools. However, if you're working on a large production, along with the final export of your film, most productions also require you to deliver stems. So what are stems? So to explain stems, let me actually go down to the bottom of this session. And so stems are the exports of every individual family that make up the final mix. So that means that we need a single WAV file with only the dialogue, only the sound effects, only the Foley, only the backgrounds, and only the music tracks. In addition to our audio families, we'll also provide an M and E stem or a music and effects stem that I'll talk about a little bit later. So to make stem tracks, we actually have to add more audio tracks to our Pro Tools session. So to add our stem tracks, let's go down to underneath Music Submaster, Control Shift N, which is for new tracks, and we're gonna need seven new stereo audio tracks. And I'll explain why we need seven in a second. Great, so Pro Tools added the new tracks to the bottom, and these are eventually gonna be our stem tracks. So then we can eventually send audio through these tracks to print them or record them. So for audio two, I'm gonna send all of the dialogue into this audio track. So I'm gonna call this dialogue stem. For the next one, sound effects stem, fully stem, background stem, music stem. And for the next one, we're actually gonna create an M and E stem or a music and effects stem. So what is an M and E stem? So the M and E stem is just all of the audio families except the dialogue recorded into one single audio track. And so the reason you would wanna do this is that if the film is gonna be distributed in a foreign country that doesn't speak English or the language that the film was originally made in, then generally they like to have an m and &E stem so that they can add new dialogue while still having all the other families exported into a single track. And so for this one, we're gonna call it the M plus E stem music and effects and then the final track is going to be our print master or our final mix track which is going to have all the audio families exported into one single clip so we'll call this pm print master great so now that we have all of our stem tracks set up let's actually send audio to these tracks so let's go up to our submasters to send that audio to the different stem tracks Okay, right, so our dialogue submaster, instead of going to stereo out, we want to send it to a bus. And I generally like to use the last few buses on the list, but you can use whichever bus you like. 
So dialog sub, I'm gonna send it to bus 115, 116, and let's rename it so we know where it's going. And so this is going to the dialog stem audio track. Great, so let's do the same thing with the sound effects sub, send it to a new bus, and then we're going to call this effects stem. The Foley is gonna to go to a new bus. We'll do 119, 120, and rename it to Foley stem backgrounds to a new bus going to the background stem and then music to a new bus and that's going to the music stem great so now that we're sending the audio let's receive the audio in our different audio tracks so dialogue stem is going to receive the dialogue stem bus sound effects is going to receive the sound effects stem Foley is going to receive the Foley stem. Backgrounds are gonna receive the background stem. And music is going to receive the music stem. Great. And then I'll skip over the m and &E for a second. All of these are gonna be sent to our final print master. So let's send our dialogue to a new bus. We'll use 127, 128. And then let's rename this the print master. And then since all of these different families need to go to the print master, I'm just going to select them all by holding shift and then holding shift alt to change the output of all the different tracks and then select the print master. Great. And so now let's set up the print master to receive that audio. So the input of the print master is going to be print master. And then finally the print master will go out to our stereo output. Great, now to set up the M&E stem, we have to bus all the audio families except the dialogue to the same track. So to do that, instead of using an output, we actually have to create a new send. So on this effect stem audio track, I'm gonna add a new send, select the bus, and we'll use 125, 126. Let's rename it to say M plus E stem. And since this is a send, we have to change the default value of the send from negative infinity to zero. Great. And since we need this on the other stems, I can just duplicate this send by holding shift alt and then drag it down to the Foley stem, background stem, and the music stem. And then let's set up the music and effects stem to receive that audio by doing the insert to the bus and then M and E stem. Great, so that's how you route all the audio. Now, since we only want to hear the final mix for the M and E stem, we're actually going to mute this output so we only hear the print master. And then the last thing I like to do, just cosmetic, is I like to change the color of the different tracks. So for the dialogue down to the music, I like to turn them red. The M and E, I like to turn it orange. And the final print master, turn this to red. Great, so now we've set up all of our different stem audio tracks. Now, if you try to play your mix though, you'll find something kind of odd. You can't actually hear your audio coming through the different stems. And that's because since we routed our audio to audio tracks, the only way you can actually hear audio in Pro Tools in an audio track without recording is by selecting the track input monitor buttons on our different stem tracks. So let's hit the green eye on all of our different tracks and then we'll be able to hear the audio. Great, so now that we set up all of our different stem tracks, we're gonna use a new technique called printing to record the audio from the different audio families within our own session so we can make our different stem tracks. So to do that, let's zoom into our two pop because this is where we want to start our stem files. And then we want to set all of our different audio tracks into record enable by hitting the recording buttons on all the different tracks. Great. So now when I hit the record button on the top and then I hit the play button, it's going to start printing or recording all the audio from the tracks above into our stem tracks here. <laughs> Thank you. 
Great, so we printed some audio into our stems and then you can see that all the different families except the dialogue got sent to the m and &E stem and then every audio family got sent to our final Printmaster track. And if we just visually look over the first few moments of these stem tracks, we can see that we had no dialogue. That makes sense. We did have some sound effects and the lion roar. We have a little Foley. We had very low BGs. And then we had our music track going on. And now to print the rest of the stems, we just have to record our audio mix for the rest of the film. Now, there are a couple downsides with printing versus bouncing. Obviously, printing does record the audio in real time, meaning that you will have to actually watch the entire film to print all your stems. However, personally, I like to print versus bounce anyway because it's a good chance for me to quality control and to listen to my mix one final time before I submit my final deliverables. Also, another benefit of printing versus bouncing is that if you do spot a mistake and you want to make a change, then you can easily fix that mistake versus having to re-export the entire film again as you would when you bounce the disc. So for example, after listening to the mix, I decided that I wanted the music louder in this one section. What I could do is raise the volume of the music submaster here. Then I'd put my cursor before that change happened. And then I could just re-record that stem. <laughs> Now, obviously you're gonna wanna add some fades if you do something like this, but now you've already fixed the mistake that you found without having to re-render the whole file again. But of course, that's not something that I want for my mix, so I'm gonna undo those changes. Great, so now let's print the rest of our film so we can finally export our stems and our print master. Great, so after printing through your entire film, your print stems should look something like this. And so you'll see all the dialogue is in the dialogue, sound effects fully come in intermittently. The background tracks are here, but they're a little low. So you can turn up the waveform zoom up here on the top left, so you can see that they're actually there. You can see our music tracks. And then here on the music and effects stem, you can see that it has everything from the sound effects, the Foley, the backgrounds, and the music in one track, but you don't see the dialogue. So we don't actually see the same waveforms from here to here. And then finally, in our final print master, we have everything together, all the audio families printed out into one single track. And too, when you're looking at it visually, the waveforms look fairly consistent and they're fairly the same size. And then we have a couple moments when it gets a little bit louder and a little bit softer. So visually, this all looks great. Also something to double check after printing your stems is that you don't have any clipping over here on your levels. If any of your stems did clip, then you'll have to go back to our limiters here on the submasters and turn down the peak of the limiters so that you don't peak on your stem tracks because if you have peaking audio on your stem tracks, especially your printmaster track, then it won't pass quality control. Great, so then the next thing I like to do with my stem tracks is just clean them up a little bit. So first off, like I said, we wanna make sure that we start the printing of the stem tracks on the two pop. I also wanna make sure that they end at the end of the video file. So I actually have a marker here that shows me which frame the video files end. And when I recorded the stems, I recorded longer than the video file. And so I'm just gonna zoom in and then cut the excess audio from these clips by just hitting S, which will cut the audio on the right side of the cursor. And then I'll hit the colon key to go down, hit S, and then just cut all of the different tracks. Great, the next thing that you'll notice is that I actually did stop the printing a few times to fix a couple different things. And so you'll see that I stopped it here to fix a volume issue, another volume issue here, and a couple different things. So in the stems, there's a couple different breaks. So now when I've exported stems in the past, I've actually heard that Pro Tools has a bug where it will have a little audio glitch when there's different cuts in your stems. So one way that I've found to get around this audio glitch is just adding a small crossfade every time there's a cut. So to do that, I'm gonna zoom in. 
I'm gonna use my apostrophe key to go to the cut. I'm gonna hold shift and then I'm gonna press the colon key a few times so then I can select all of the different stems. So now you can see that I have all the stems selected. Also have to make sure that you have your track and edit selection button enabled up here on the top left. Then I'll hit the right carrot key to nudge to the right and we can change the nudge factor from our nudge settings up here on the top. And then by holding shift and then clicking L, I can select one frame of this audio clip. And then the final step, I will hit F to then add a one frame crossfade from the old clip to then the newly recorded clip that has the corrected audio. So that was a lot of shortcuts, but essentially all I did was add a one frame crossfade between all the different cuts on all my different stem tracks. So now I'm gonna do that for the rest of the different breaks within my stems. So to go to the next break, just hit the apostrophe and then make the crossfade, make the crossfade. And there we go. So now I've added one frame crossfades so that we prevent Pro Tools from glitching in between the two different audio clips. Then the next thing we have to do with our stems is we have to make sure that our two pop is at the correct volume. And so to fix that easily, let's just break this one frame clip here on our dialog stem. Then let's go up to audio suite, go to other, and let's go to the signal generator and let's regenerate our default two pop tone of 1K at negative 20 dB. So I'm gonna render that in and there you go. So you see it was too loud before. And then let's just elevator and duplicate this settings to all of our other stems so that they're in compliance with the two pop standard. Great, so now that we've cleaned up our stem tracks, now we need to consolidate all of the different clips into single wave files. So to do that, let's first work on the dialog stem and let's zoom in. And what we need to do is select all of the different audio clips on this track. So I'm going to click the first clip on this track and then I'm going to zoom all the way out and find the last clip on this track, which is this one. And by holding shift and then I click on it, I can select all of those audio clips within that selection. Then if you go to edit, consolidate clip, what this will do is then take all of the individual audio clips and then render them into one wave file, which is exactly what we're looking for. Great, so now you can see that it took away all the different cuts and now all of our dialog is in one WAV file titled Dialog Stem 20. All right, so let's just do the same thing for the rest of the stems. So since I have the time frame that I want selected, I can actually just hit the colon key to go down in the edit window and then same thing, edit, consolidate, clip. All right, so we consolidated the sound effects stem Let's consolidate the Foley stem and the shortcut to consolidate clips is Alt Shift 3. Let's consolidate the background stem, the music stem, the M&E stem, and finally our final print master. Great, so now that we've consolidated all the different stems, now we just have to export them out of Pro Tools. So let's select all of them by holding Shift and then clicking P. And then instead of doing bounce to disk, since these are already consolidated, we can export them from our clip list over here on the right. So you can see that all the different files are already selected over here on the right. So if you right click on one of the clips that's selected and then you click export clips as files, then you can export this WAV file out of Pro Tools. So let's just double check all of our settings. We want a WAV file, we want them interleaved, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz, and our destination we want to be our deliverables folder. So we'll click on the deliverables folder and then we'll click use current folder and then let's export the clips. Great, so now that Pro Tools has processed all the audio clips, let's go and check them out in our deliverables folder and here's all the different clips. 
Now, unfortunately, Pro Tools just names the clips on whatever they were named within our session, which isn't really helpful when we're trying to deliver our files. So we just have to quickly rename the clips. So generally, I like to add the film name into the clip name. So this is Murphy's Law BG Stem. And then I like to put the date, which is 52420. And if you wanted to put any additional info, like version number, then you could do so like this. And so there we go. Let's name the other clips so they also follow the same standardization. So this is the dialogue stem. And you'll see I just copied the name from before to make this a little bit easier. This is the fully stem, sound effects stem, our music stem, our M and E mix. So we could call this M plus E mix with the date. And then our final print master, Murphy's Law print master, 05-2420. Great, so those are the files that you'll eventually deliver to the distributor or to the director, to the producer, whoever you're working with, to then finally be sent back to the editor, to then finally be exported in the final deliverables, sent to QC, and then eventually, hopefully seen by an audience. So this completes this tutorial. And just for a short recap, we set up our stem tracks by adding new tracks to Pro Tools so that we could eventually print the dialogue, the sound effects, the Foley, the backgrounds, the music families into their own individual stem tracks. And then we combined all of that except the dialogue into the music and effects stem. And then finally we sent all the different families into our final print master track. And then after printing through our session, we cleaned up our audio tracks by making them the correct length, fixing the two pop, and then adding crossfades to all the different audio clips. Then finally, we consolidated the clips, we exported them out of Pro Tools, and we cleaned up the deliverable names. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.